Hi everybody, welcome to the Actors Academy. Today we're going to be talking about how to self-tape your acting audition. This is going to be part one of two. So we have this into two parts because we're going to try and find out first what are the technicals that we need in doing our self-tape auditions when we're submitting it to cast and directors, but also what do we have to do for the acting side of it. So part one, this video, is going to be focusing on the technical sides, while part two is going to be focusing on the acting perspective of it. So without further ado, we're going to get into it here. So first what we should talk about is what is a self-tape, just so you guys get the general idea of what it is. So a self-tape is literally you recording yourself, you're self-taping yourself, and this will be either with your phone or with a camera if you have it. Most likely though, you guys are gonna be using your phones just because cameras cost a little bit of money. It is something you can save up for, and maybe in the long term you should save up for it because then you can get better quality content. But for right now, maybe you're using your phone, and this is gonna work for either people who are using their phones or for people who have cameras. Now, what happens is, is maybe your agent will call you up if you have an agent. They'll call you up and they'll say, hey, how's it going? You know, you have this audition. And they'll say, hey, they want you to record this scene, so they'll send you a scene, or pretend it's a Netflix audition. They send you this scene, and all you have to do, instead of going and driving out to LA, and going and meeting in person with the casting directors and auditioning, you do it all at home. So that's, in a way, a benefit for the actor. If an actor is sometimes nervous going into meetings, this is something that they can do that can sometimes benefit them, because then they don't have to worry about going in person. But, on the flip side of that, it's also a disadvantage because sometimes you should meet with these people in person because when you get to meet with people, they get to communicate with you on a personal level. When it's on camera and they just see a recording of yourself, they don't really get to know who you are. When you get to go and you walk into an audition room, they get to know a little bit of who you are more than you have on a self-tape. The beauty of being at home when you're doing your self-tape is that you can record yourself a hundred times before you decide which take you want to do and send it off to the cast and director. Whereas if you go to the audition in person in LA and you're auditioning, well, you only get one shot usually. 99% of the time, they're just gonna shoot you once, they're gonna have the camera on you, they'll do the scene with you, and they'll say, okay, great, thank you. Sometimes on different occasions, they may hold you a little bit longer and say, hey, you know what, let's redo this scene again. It could be because they wanna see if you can take direction, it might be that they didn't like the scene, it could be the camera, it could be maybe they just wanna have two takes of it. You never know why really they ask you to redo the scene again because it varies depending on casting directors. So this is what the self-tape is. You're recording yourself. Again, there's advantages to it and there's also disadvantages to it. But one of the nice things is, is that if you are doing a self-tape and you are recording yourself, this is a chance for you to get your best work possible recorded and submit it to the casting director. So you don't want to settle at all. So one of the things that we really want to focus on when it comes to the self-tape is that we want to look presentable. We want to look good when we're on camera. This doesn't mean you have to look like a model because not all characters are trying to necessarily look like a model. You're trying to look like a real person in an everyday environment depending on what the environment is of the scene. You know, if you're trying to play the average high schooler, well, you're probably not going to want to look like a model because the average high schooler doesn't look like a model. Or if you're going to have to play a businessman, unless, hey, in the description they're saying, hey, you know, this businessman that you're going to play it looks like a model. Or they say, hey, this kid you're going to play looks like a model. And then you're going to kind of want to do yourself up a little bit, as best as you can with the means that you have available to yourself. But the things that you have to really focus on is that when it comes to the camera and you're shooting yourself, you want to get everything as perfect as you can possible. Now, I've said this before, when it comes to acting, there is a lot of luck that's involved. But you can put yourself in the best position to achieve luck. So what I mean by that is if you have a self-tape and you're recording yourself for a different Netflix show, if you're recording yourself and the people can't see you at all, so your lighting is terrible, they can't see your face, no matter how good your acting is, your opportunity to get lucky to have them call you for a callback and maybe book you for the part is drastically decreased just because of the quality of the video because they can't see who you are. There are some important things that really get involved when it comes to the self-tape. These important things are, one, you have to be heard, you have to be seen, and you have to be focused on. So first, let's focus on the lighting. In this self-tape, they are watching you. They have to see you. If they can't see you, then there's no point of doing this self-tape. So what you have to have is you have to have some sort of good lighting setup. As you go along and you're in this business of acting, you want to get more proficient on your setup that you have for doing your self-tapes. You want it to just be instant. So if your agent calls you and says, hey, you know, you got an audition for this Netflix thing, they want you to self-tape, send me uh, the tape by tonight, 
you want to be sure that you have everything set up. You don't want to have to go and say, okay, let me get my camera out, my tripod, my lights and everything. You want to have it already set up because it makes your life easier. And if your life is easier, it makes you a little bit more comfortable. And if you're more comfortable, automatically you can do a little bit better work with your acting. And you don't have to really worry about how you look and is, is everything set up properly. You have everything already the way you want. So when it comes to lighting, if you can afford a lighting setup, that's great. You can find cheap lights, cheap lights, cheap stands that you can put up. You can have a 50 to $60 kit that you can put up. It doesn't have to be super professional, $500 lighting setup. It just has to be something really cheap and simple. 50 to 60 bucks, maybe you could even do it for less but you have to have some sort of lighting setup. Now, in the beginning, maybe for whatever reason, you can't afford this lighting setup. That's fine, you have to make do with what you have. You know, you're not gonna have everything all at once, but you do have to try and do the best that you can with what you have. So if you don't have a lighting setup, well, you're gonna have to then record in the day, so that does limit yourself, because if you're only available in the evenings, then you can't really record, but you need some sort of light. So if you record yourself in the day, and you're by a window, and you don't have direct sunlight coming on you, but there's light coming through a window, it will be enough light to shine on you, to show who you are a little bit. You may not get the perfect lighting setup that you want, but it's a better lighting setup than if you just use your house lights, and you turn the lights on in your house. But now, let's imagine this. It's in the nighttime. Your agent calls you and says, hey, last minute thing, they want you to record this self-tape. Can you record yourself? Well, you don't have a lighting setup, it's nighttime, so you don't have the sun to come through the window to kind of brighten up the room a little bit. Then you have to make do with what you have, and you have to use the lights in your house. Then you have to try and hopefully maybe find an angle where you're lit up the best, where you look the most presentable possible. So you have to find first the lighting setup. It's really important. You have to work with what you have, and hopefully you can try to achieve more. So if you don't have a lighting setup right now, all you need is one, two, or three lights, have tripods, so then you can put the lights up and they will shine on you. That's the best one that you can have. If you don't have that, well then the next one is, okay, trying and using the sunlight to your advantage when it's shining in your house. Not direct sunlight, but enough where it lights you up and you can look the best at whichever angle you're trying to get of yourself in the house. Maybe one corner of the house you look one way, maybe in the other corner of the house you look a little bit better, just because of how the lighting shines in the room at that time of the day. The important thing to just take into consideration is to always try and achieve the best work that you can possible and have the best technical side of it. So ideally you will want to save up those 50 or $60 so you can get a good lighting setup so then you can light yourself because you will look better. So I've had people who have sent me self tapes before and they say, hey, I just recorded this and the acting might have been fine, but there's a lot of other technical things involved where the tape itself doesn't look very presentable and you wanna have everything going in your favor so you can achieve the best luck possible. It doesn't mean you're gonna get it, but you wanna have your best foot forward all the time. If your acting's great and your audition tape looks amazing, the technical side of it looks great, that's gonna be better for you instead of having the acting be great and it looks terrible. So you just wanna do everything you can to have it look the best. The next thing we're gonna be talking about is the sound. You have to be heard. Now one of the problems that actors really have is that they record themselves in one of the most busiest rooms in the house possible. where People are either walking by or they're eating food and you hear plates and bowls and sinks going on. You have to find a space where you can work and you can be heard and you're not hearing any other crazy thing around you. You also don't wanna necessarily be by a window, an open window or a door because you may hear all the traffic outside, you may hear dogs barking, people talking, you may get a lot of different sounds that will come in to your audio. So that's one of the things you wanna be careful for. You just wanna find a space or you can actually work and you don't have to worry about other sounds and crazy things coming in and interrupting your work. And it'll also distract you while you're acting because you're gonna be acting and you're gonna be in a scene and all of a sudden you're gonna hear plates and bowls and dishes and it might take you out of it. Especially if you're new to acting, there'll be a lot of different things that will distract you. So you wanna make sure that you can put your best foot forward all the time. So when it comes to the sound, you can use your phone. It's fine, they'll be able to hear you, but just make sure, hey, if they hear you, they only hear you. They don't hear anybody else. They only hear you and whoever's reading with you when you're in the scene. If you do, if you're gonna have like say a DSLR camera, then you're gonna be wanting to get a mic because when it comes to those cameras, the audio isn't necessarily that great. You wanna go and you wanna get a mic. Now again, you can find a lot of different people talking about different mics that you can get, different options that you have for prices. If you want me to specifically make a video on that, I can but you guys can also easily find it just by doing a simple Google or YouTube search. But if you guys need me to do it, um, I can always do a video on that for you guys too. 
Okay, the last part of this is to focus on you. This is the third point here, and this is the really important one that a lot of people easily mess up. So they may have great lighting, they may have good, decent audio, but the one thing that they have is they have a horrible background behind them. Now, when it comes to this background, you want it to be as plain as possible, as plain as you can get it. If you can have just a blank wall, and that's what you're filming up against, you have a wall behind you, it's blank, it's not crazy patterns or pictures or trophies or anything behind you, no mess, that's the ideal situation for yourself because then you have a blank background. You can even get a backdrop if you would like. A backdrop is basically something that, like a, almost kind of like a curtain, you could think about it. They have a bunch of different backdrops, but basically what you do is you put this backdrop behind you, so then it's just a nice clean background, and then they just see you and they can focus on you. When you have a lot of other things around you, it can, one, it'll distort from you, people won't pay attention to you as much, but also it can give a different idea of the character that you're portraying. So, for example, let's say you had to portray a successful businessman, let's just say that's your character. You have to portray this type of character, someone who's very clean, someone who's very elegant, someone who really holds themselves together really well. Now, let's imagine just on this day, you know, your house isn't the cleanest. Maybe you just had a party and it's not the most presentable that you want it to be. Now, you may be all dressed up in your suit, you have the right outfit for this self-tape that you're recording, but the background looks like trash. <laughs> you have food everywhere, it looks like a mess. It's gonna not be the right representation for your character, for who you are, it will seem less believable when they're watching it. Even if your acting is great, even if your acting seems believable, other factors get involved. If they see this crazy background, they're gonna represent that to you and your character. Sometimes, to a degree, yeah, the background can help you, but I try to give you guys the majority of situations. 99% of the time, you're gonna want a plain background because that is what one, that's what they're used to. Some people make this mistake though and they have crazy backgrounds, but if you have a clean background, it's what they're most used to. It's what they're gonna be more comfortable with when they're watching you. It will allow them to focus on you more. It won't distract from anything. And it will allow you to put your best foot forward even more. Again, the acting portion of this is very, very, very important and that's what comes in in part two. But now, if you have great acting, but these technical things are wrong and they're not really working, it's not gonna do you any service. You could be the best actor in the world, but if you're being recorded and they can barely hear you, or something's distracting in the background, then you're gonna have less likely of a chance to get called in for a callback. Or if your background's crazy and they're not focusing on you when you're doing great work, or if your lighting sucks and they can't really see you, or the lighting's not a good representation of what you necessarily look like for the character. So you have to have these things first before you have the acting bit. Now the acting one's gonna be coming out very soon, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you'll be updated right away when that one comes out. Part two is gonna be helping you guys because you could be at any level within your acting career, and there's gonna be points in there that can help you no matter what level you're at. You could be a complete beginner, there's gonna be points that will help you. You could be at an advanced level, and there are gonna be points in there that will help you. Of course, there will be some points in there that you're gonna to have to be just a little bit more advanced to maybe understand, but for the most part, you're gonna have a lot of points in there that anybody can do and you should implement. After going through all the different audition tapes that people are sending me, there's a lot of common factors that they are messing up on a little bit. So I wanted to clear some of it up by making a video on this so then you guys can fix those and then it also makes it easier when I get it because I don't have to give those notes, repeated notes, and I can give you guys new notes. So this is part one. Again, this focuses on the technical side. Part two, which is gonna be coming out, will be focusing more on the acting side of it. Also, I'm gonna leave the 10 hour acting masterclass down in the description below and also in the comment section if you guys are interested in that. And also, we have some new merchandise. So this is our official Actors Academy logo. Um, I'm ecstatic by it and I think it looks amazing. So, if you guys are interested in it and you guys want to get your own to be a part of the Academy a little bit more, uh, you'll actually see below this video there will be our sweatshirts available, our shirts, our mugs, and a lot of other things that we have. So, if you're interested in it and you want to be closer with the Academy, just make sure you get one of yours today. So anyways, see you guys next time. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.